Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use actions from Photoshop and from third-party sources inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, in case you're not familiar with actions, let me just show you that quickly. Go up to the Window menu and come down to Actions right here. Now, what actions are, are a pre-recorded series of steps that you can apply to an image. These are the actions that come with Photoshop Elements. There's not a whole lot here. We can add bottom borders in here. We can make the file a little bit thinner. We can resize and crop the image to some standard settings. And there's also some special effects stuff here. Now, again, there's not a whole lot on these. And you can't make new actions inside of Photoshop Elements. You can do that over in Photoshop, but you can't do it here in Elements. So if you want to have additional actions, you need to get them from someplace else. Let me just run through one of these so you can see how these things work. Let's look at the one inch white bottom border, our top option up here. You see it goes through a series of steps. This changes the canvas size, height one inch, extends the color and so forth. Just a few little steps. Now to play an action, you simply click on the action. Notice this is a folder up here, then that's our first action right there. When you have an action selected, you can click on the play button, and it'll then run those steps. And there we go, there's that action, there's that border, that one inch border at the bottom of the picture. Very useful if you want to put captions on pictures, things like that. It's a real nice little action, actually. Okay, I'm going to just revert this to its original. There we are, undo all those steps. So there it is. There's a few actions in here. Some of these are useful, some of them not so useful. But again, you may want to have additional actions. Now, because actions are made over in Photoshop, it's quite possible that you'll get actions that can't be used in Photoshop Elements. Elements can only do things that you can do with the tools and with the menus and techniques that are available inside of Photoshop Elements. You can't use this as a way of bringing in Photoshop techniques into Elements. This won't make Elements any more powerful, but it will allow you to automate a lot of those steps. So I'll show you two things here. The first one, we're going to be bringing in an action that I found online. It's a free action you can get, and I have a link for this action in the description. And you can go ahead and download that there if you want to. Download it yourself. So let's take a look at how you can add in or load a new action. Click on that little icon right there and come down to Load Actions. And that brings us up. Now, on this one, this is actually, let me go here to my Action Sets. There we go. I have a Photoshop Elements folder, just some generic stuff that I placed in here. It's just on my hard drive. And then I have in here a folder full of third party action sets. And here is that new action set as a zip file. When that's unzipped, it has these two actions in it. We'll take the bottom action right down here, this coffee shop, that's the name of the website, Cashmere Rose. And so you navigate to wherever it is that you have your action sitting, and then simply load that action, and there it is. It's now loaded into your set. Now if I close this down and open it back up again, this will still be here. What happens is when you load the action is that Photoshop Elements copies the action over to Photoshop Elements Actions folder. It's over in the presets. I'll show you where that is in just a minute. We need to know where that is for bringing in actions from Photoshop. But here's this new action. It goes through a lot of steps. Now this one has been checked by the author of this action to run with Photoshop Elements. And that's very important. If you have an action that has a step that won't work in Photoshop Elements, you'll, you'll get a little notice about that. And the rest of the action may or may not work depending upon what that first action is. We'll copy over an action from Photoshop that has that issue. So you can see how that works. Okay, now to run this action, click on the action just like that. Again, it's with that arrow right there. 
and click on the play button it goes through Now the first action in here is it gives you this little message about the action there's the website and stuff like that choose continue it then goes through all of those steps those automated steps there it is and does that action I kinda like this one actually for kind of an older look for an image real nice look you see there's lots and lots of stuff in here that it did on this action and this is a real nice job okay and again that's a third party action that I copied from a site online now, if you want to find actions like this simply go online do a search for Photoshop elements actions and you'll find a lot of stuff available but make sure that they're made for Photoshop elements so that they don't have any Photoshop stuff in there which will cause problems with the action all right let's just reset this edit and revert back to the original there we go notice how the action still stays there okay I'm not going to take this over to Photoshop and I'll show you how to save an action from Photoshop so you can then load it into Photoshop elements if you happen to have a copy of Photoshop so you can use them from Photoshop so here's Photoshop a little different horsey picture there for you and in here I'll bring up the actions panel there we go actions and here's the actions in here for Photoshop now Photoshop you can record actions you can all kinds of fun stuff in here and there are lots and lots of actions available inside of Photoshop if you want to use these over in Photoshop elements what you should do is take a look at it we'll take a look at the sepia toning here open the action up take a look at the steps and make sure there's nothing in here that can't be done over in Photoshop now all of this can be done except for this top one here make snapshot this is taking a snapshot from the history state panel and you can't do that inside of Photoshop elements but all the rest works so this will actually work out for us now what I've done is I've made a new folder up here and I just called it set one you can make new folders inside of Photoshop by clicking on the new folder button right there make new sets and you can then place your different actions inside of those sets and that's the important step here when you're copying an action I like putting them into a set so click on this action here I'll drag it up into set one there it is so there's my set one action I'll click on set one and now if we go over here to this little icon right there brings up our options and then down here we have the option to save actions that's what we want to do here you can't save actions in elements but you can save actions in Photoshop so I'll save the action brings up a, a dialog box and it puts us into the presets and actions folder for Photoshop now you want the exact same folder but you want it over in Photoshop elements that's the way it, my preferred way of doing this I could save it here go into elements and navigate back to find it over there but I prefer doing it from here so I'm going to back up a little bit back up to presets back up to Photoshop CC 2017 back up to Adobe notice I'm in my user folder here in the app data let me show you the whole thing I'll go back to the user folder and this is on a Windows machine here so it's my users folder so it'll be users then in this case George and then come down to app data right there and roaming open that up and there's the Adobe open that up and in here you want to scroll down and find the Photoshop elements and that's right there where is it actually it was right there there we go Photoshop elements double click on that these are the ones that I currently have installed on my system I like having several versions just to answer questions and so forth but here's number 15 Let's bring that up there's the presets folder bring that up and there's the actions so again a little hard to find maybe but it's in your users folder in app data in roaming in Adobe Photoshop elements your version number presets and actions that's where you want to save it to and then just choose save and it's now there in the regular folder for me to work from okay now that it's saved I no longer need to have Photoshop up here I'm done with the Photoshop side of things I simply saved that over where I can get to it easily now again you can save it to any folder you want to 
and simply navigate to the other folder. I just like saving it there because that's the default location for having actions over in Photoshop Elements, which makes it easy to remember where it's going to be hiding. Okay, let's switch back over to Elements. There we are. And I'll go over here and we'll load actions. Now at this point I need to navigate over to my folder. Here's my George folder right there. Click on that. And there's the app data. Open that up. There's Roaming. There's Adobe. I'll scroll down and find Photoshop Elements. There it is. Go into my version number right there. Presets, Actions, and there it is. Again, as you, as you can see, I could have put it anywhere I wanted to. I just like putting it into the default location for this. Let's go ahead and click on Load. That loads it in right there. There's our new action. There it is. Now, at this point, I can run this action. Here's all of the steps. And as you recall, I said that it can't do this make snapshot, which is really unimportant for this particular action. Now, what the snapshot does is it makes a copy of the background layer. I'm just going to take the background layer and do it like that, make my own copy, and I'll take care of that. Okay, let's run this and see how this runs. Click on the play button. And there it is, the first command doesn't work, it's not available. So this is a command that's not available inside of Photoshop Elements, it's a Photoshop command. It's okay, everything else works. Let's click on continue. It then goes through the rest of those steps, and there you go. So that's how you can use third-party or Photoshop actions inside of Photoshop Elements. Again, the important thing here really, well, there are two things. First one is, of course, simply put the action onto your computer someplace where you can find it and use the load actions to add it into your palette over here, your panel. Second thing is to make sure that the action can be used inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, if you go online to find one that will work with Photoshop Elements, you're just fine. You're all set. And again, easy to find those. Just do a Google search, Photoshop Elements Actions, and you'll get a whole bunch of these things available for you. Or if you're using a Photoshop one, you may have to test it. If it looks confusing as you're looking at all the steps, just copy it over and test it out and see what happens. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Most of these simpler ones will work just fine inside of Photoshop Elements. But again, there you go. That's how you can expand your list of actions here inside of Photoshop Elements with some real nice stuff or with stuff over there from Photoshop. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can.